Pourquoi? Moi, j'avais une visio, j'ai une petite visio là, de, de 4 heures à 5 heures. Là, puis que je fais ça, vous m'en chez nous après. <rire> Salut! So, yeah, um, I'm just going to ask everyone to have their mics off, please, while we do the presentation. Uh, like I mentioned, any questions or comments can be to the chat. They will be addressed at the end. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be recorded. You're welcome to keep your cameras off if your cameras on, if you're comfortable. If you're not, you can keep them off. There's absolutely no problem. So for the project, um, just a quick introduction. We uh, aim to generate new ideas and thinking and learning. Um, and we want to create a resource for teachers so they have access to different topics and seminars. And so all of the content that is made today and our past um, webinars will be available on the Puro website, which you should find on the posters or the email that have been sent to you. Um, so thank you. And I'll give it to Monica to present our speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you. Uh, well, I won't I won't take too much time so we can get right to the presentation, uh, but I have to say I'm so thrilled that my colleague at Université Laval, Susan Parks, accepted to do this presentation. Um, this is an amazing project that she's been working on. Um, and I don't want to steal her thunder too much. I won't say too much, but it has so much potential for language learning, and I really admire her work in in really tightly linking practice in language teaching in schools in Quebec with the entire world and the affordances <laughs> of technology in that regard. And I have to admit to being a bit of a Luddite um, in some ways, so uh, I'm ever grateful to uh, Susan Parks and her work for dragging me kicking and screaming into the 21st century uh, with these wonderful <laughs> initiatives. And this is only one of many of the technological and, uh, uh, and digital uh, techniques that she's incorporated not only in in tandem language learning for for teachers but also in our own teacher training program uh, at Université Laval for ESL specialists where we work very closely together in pedagogy and also practicum supervision so uh, I think I'll leave it there without further ado uh, my colleague Professor Parks take it away Thank you very much, Monica, and also thank you very much for inviting me to present today. Yes, as you can see, I'll be talking about 21st century language learning in regard to the E-Tandem approach. Whoops. And uh, I'll be addressing the points which you see on your screen. So first of all, what is tandem language learning? Uh, basically, in tandem language learning, L2 learners pair up with native competent speakers of the language they are learning in order to help each other learn their respective languages. And that, uh, for example, here in Quebec, ESL learners can partner up with French second language learners in English parts of Canada or in the United States. Uh, students who are learning Spanish here in Quebec can partner up with uh, students who are learning French uh, in Mexico, for example. Uh, tandem language learning, initially, initially it involved face-to-face -face tandems, and that's actually going back a while in the late 1980s. Uh, but with the advent of the uh, internet, these exchanges are increasingly being done as e-tandems using various platforms. Any teacher who is thinking about setting up a tandem, an e-tandem exchange has to give thought to what platform they're going to use for the, the, uh, for the exchange. And there are various platforms available. However, two things that should be taken into consideration is one, especially when you're dealing with students in a school context, uh, to what degree can the platform be used with ease to uh, manage a class of 25 students? And secondly, to what degree does the platform provide affordances which are conducive to second language learning? So with these two things in mind, my myself and two colleagues, we created the Tandem Canada platform. 
Uh, my colleagues are Sabrina Priego, who is an ESL teacher education, uh, a second language teacher education, and uh, Laurence Capu, who is a um, who is a computer science specialist, both at uh, Université Laval. And teachers who use this platform, they can uh, have their students engage in various types of activities, both synchronous and uh, and asynchronous. Asynchronous. Now, with respect to the constraints in the school system, we usually um, suggest that they use the forum, a forum activity. And just to uh, just as an example, when students use the forum, uh, this is the 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 tool the toolbox. This is what they see. So of course. Um, they can write their messages uh, just like in an email um, uh, exchange. You know, they bold uh, italics, they can write in different colors, but there are other things which they can do. They can attach documents with the link function. Just a minute here, I've got these little colors. Got to check. <laughs> Try this out. The affordances of this of the Teams platform here. Yes, yeah, so you can click on link and then you can attach a document just like you do in an email. You can add images, but you can also do audio, little audio recordings. And the advantage of the Tandem platform is that the tool to do this is incorporated, is integrated right into the platform, which means that you don't have to go to another device and then uh, uh, have it added on as an attachment. And this is what I mean when I talk about the affordances uh, of a particular platform. And of course, with the Tandem Canada platform, you can also have students uh, do little videos. And once again, this tool is integrated right into the, um, the platform itself. Now, in Tandem Language Learning, there are three important principles bilingualism, uh, reciprocity, and autonomy. What is particular about tandem language learning is that we ask students to communicate in both the L1 and the L2. Um, but what's also important when they carry out these exchanges is to keep, uh, to keep the languages separate, uh, to not mix them up, um, but basically in an ESL FSL exchange, the, the, the objective is to have students communicate 50% of the time in French and 50% of the time in English. That's the basic objective. Reciprocity refers to the fact that students in, within a tandem exchange, uh, they are supposed to help each other learn their target language. Now, how do they do this? Well, there's two main ways, I think. First of all, by communicating in both the L2 and the L1. Uh, we know that when students are, are learning a second language, they need to practice, they need to use it. That's quite obvious. However, when uh, students communicate in their first language or the language of, of, the, of the school or the community, uh, they provide valuable input to their partners. And their partners, this is the this is the way that partners can um, enrich uh, their vocabulary and pick up on new words and expressions. We also ask uh, the partners to give each other feedback. However, this does not mean like having them explain big grammar rules. Uh, the partners are mainly uh, drawing on their um, intuitive knowledge of the language as L1 or, or competent speakers of the language. Um, um, so it, it boils down to a lot of reformulation. You said X. Well, in let's say English, we say this. Tandem language learning is a flexible approach, approach insofar as the students who are partnered up do not have to be at the same level of language proficiency. In fact, teachers can choose different topics and function of their students' proficiency level. In fact, we encourage um, students to choose different topics because students can easily run out of ideas uh, if they're talking about the same thing in the same language, uh, in, a, in different languages. Uh, and also the teachers can, um, uh, can use, uh, can draw on, um, for their topics, they can draw on the themes that they normally use in their in their classes. 
So uh, as an example, uh, if you have students engaged in an ESL FSL exchange, and let's say that they are communicating via uh, the forum, in the forum. So the ESL teacher might say, OK, I want my teachers to my students to talk about sports. The FSL teacher says I want them to talk about their Christmas holidays. So in the forum, the ESL students, they would um, write about sports in English. Uh, they would ask the FSL students questions about sports uh, in English, and the FSL students would answer back in English and also in English give feedback on two or three uh, mistakes. Uh, and the same procedure would be used for the uh, French second language students. The third principle pertains to autonomy. We know it's important to help students develop their autonomy as language learners. And in a tandem exchange, the role of the teacher is extremely important. Uh, and uh, one of the it's is extremely important, particularly in terms of helping students develop the strategies which they can use to get the most out of the exchange linguistically, culturally, both for themselves, but also in terms of helping their partners uh, learn their uh, target language. So we are doing some research uh, related to um, tandem language learning by teachers in the Quebec schools. And we asked, we, have, we asked students, you know, well, how do you feel about tandem language learning? And basically, whether it's students in the secondary school or in the elementary grades, they basically feel very positive about these exchanges. Uh, the exchanges are motivating for students in general. Uh, and in one of the classes that we're doing uh, research in, well, we have done research in a grade six ESL um, uh, class and intensive students who were partnered up with students in um, uh, in Chicago. Uh, at the end of the exchange, I I did some, inter some interviews with a few of the case study students and I asked them, well, do you like doing these exchanges? And here are some typical responses. So that student L said, oui, beaucoup, parce que je me suis créé de nouveaux amis, j'ai eu de nouvelles amitiés, j'ai connu des trucs que je ne savais pas sur les États, sur les États-Unis et sur Chicago. And student O said, j'ai vraiment aimé ça. C'est cool de savoir sur, sur où ils habitent et comment ils vivent là-bas dans un autre pays. Now, uh, as I mentioned, in tandem language learning, um, we ask students to communicate in both the L1 uh, and the L2. And as I'm sure you're aware, here in uh, Quebec, uh, the, the ESL uh, curriculum, uh, what is emphasized is um, in the ESL, uh, the, the emphasis placed on maximizing the target language, i.e. English. Uh, and um, what we have uh, come across is that not all teachers, uh, either ESL teachers or French second language teachers, not all teachers are at ease uh, with having their students communicate in the first language, like ESL students having their students communicate uh, in French within the ESL classroom and French second language teachers having their students communicate in English uh, within the um, uh, French class. So this seems to be a bit of a roadblock. Uh, and this relates to teachers' beliefs about language uh, teaching and language learning. Um, however, I, with this grade six class, uh, the class that was partnered up with students in Chicago, I asked the students what they felt about using both languages uh, in the tandem exchange. Est-ce que tu penses que c'est une bonne idée de faire ce type d'échange en anglais et en français? Uh, and uh, student A said, oui, parce que on les aide et puis eux, ils nous aident en échange. Si on faisait juste une langue, ça ce serait juste comme on les aide ou l'inverse. Ils nous aident, mais on ne les aide pas. In general, it seems that students are quite at ease with using both languages. Uh, and they've kind of very quickly understood the principle of reciprocity. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, you help me, I help you. <laughs> um, so, so.
so now moving on to my next point, how to get started. There are basically seven steps, but of course I can't go into any great detail with these steps um, uh, at this point. But step one is create an account in the Tandem Canada platform and step two, find a partner. Now, if we look at the Tandem Canada, at the Tandem Canada platform, if we look here, um, generally when the when you go on the platform, it opens up in French, but if you go into the long menu, you will see that the interface is available in English, French, or Spanish. So this is the English, English uh, interface. And uh, the first step would be to go on the platform and open, create an account. So you just click here. There's a little pop up uh, which the teacher completes and the webmaster sends the teacher uh, codes. And at that point, uh, the teacher can log in. I am a teacher, log in. You just click here. Students log in here. They click on I am a student. And once they have their login codes, they can log in too. And when the teacher logs in, then the teacher sees basically this platform is set up into two parts. Uh, the first part is um, manage my classes. And the second part is the exchange space. Uh, when the teacher wants to move on and set up uh, particular activities for the student, she he or she goes into the exchange space and the students too. This is where the activities are carried out. But the first part is manage my classes. And the first step is to um, uh, is to um, add a class. So the teacher clicks on this and adds the class profile. And once this is done and only once this is done, can the teacher go on and find a partner and look for a partner? And this is down in the part of um, uh, right here in terms of um, uh, finding, a, finding a partner. So if the teacher, the twinning process, uh, finding a, clicking on the, the twinning button there and looking for a partner. And if the ESL teacher, for example, if uh, the ESL teacher sees uh, an FSL teacher who might be of interest, uh, the teacher clicks on the invite button and at that point the two teachers can communicate with each other and if they agree to work together then at that point uh, amongst other things they will be sent login codes for their students it's important to stress that we do not collect any personal information uh, about students um, so going back to this little step pro seven step process uh, once teachers have a partner, it's really, really important for them to try to get to know their partner, to go online via Teams or Zoom and talk to the partner. There's things that they need to talk about. Uh, for example, you know, how do they want to pair up the students randomly or do they have some specific criteria? How many times do they want to carry out these exchanges and uh, what type of uh, ex what, what type of um, exchange do they want them to do? So uh, if they're using the Tandem Canada platform, they can choose an activity on it. And then uh, the next step is to set up the activity. Of course, we have uh, uh, detailed step-by-step -step information, YouTube videos about how to use the platform. The next step six is carrying out the activity. Just like in any uh, activity or task, there are these three parts. Before the exchange, preparing the students for the exchange. During the exchange, the students carry out the exchange and after the exchange, the after exchange part is also very important because one have to has to remember with the Tim Canada platform, everything that the students do is recorded. The teachers have access to all the work and the students have access to all the work. And once students have their login codes, they can have access to their work both in school or at home. They can show their parents what they're doing. Uh, so after the exchange, uh, they could be asked to uh, do a little reflection in terms of their strategies. They could go back and check out uh, what their partner wrote and maybe identify some uh, words and expressions that they'd like to remember. They can be asked to take notes and they can be asked to uh, present things that they found out about their partner to uh, to the other students in their class. So there's like these reinvestment activities which can also be done. 
The teacher's role here too is to monitor the student's progress and to intervene as necessary, for example, in helping them to further develop their progress, uh, their strategies in terms of helping them understand how they can give feedback, because this is also something which students need help with, how to give feedback to, uh, uh, to a partner. This is not at all obvious. Um, okay. So, uh, you probably uh, know that in April 2019, the Ministry of Education here in Quebec published the Digital Competency Framework, which consists of 12 dimensions. Uh, and in my opinion, um, this framework, there are three of these dimensions are particularly relevant to uh, tandem language learning. Dimension five, collaborating via digital technology. Dimension six, communicating via digital technology. Uh, what is particularly interesting about tandem language learning is that it uh, creates enhanced opportunities for language learning and authentic communication with target language peers. I mean, just think of ESL classes. How many of those students actually have the opportunity during all of their schooling to collaborate and get to know peers, uh, their age? Um, the dimension eight, using digital tools to foster inclusion and address diverse needs. I think we got to remember, you know, not all students can afford to travel to English speaking areas or attend summer English summer camps. Uh, not all students have relatives who speak the target language and can encourage them. Uh, and there are students who don't even see the point of learning the target language. Uh, so, I mean, there's something here to be said about social justice and the use of technology uh, in this regard. Now, in my opinion, uh, with the current state of uh, technology and in thinking about language learning within moving forward uh, within uh, the 21st uh, century, I think there's a new role which is emerging for teachers, which at least for the time being, I'm calling a role as a social scaffolding facilitator. Uh, I think it's important for teachers to pay more attention uh, in terms of the way they mediate students' contact with target language, with the target language community, with speakers of the target language. Uh, Engstrom has spoken about encapsulated learning. And I mean, when you think of it, I mean, ESL students, language students in general, they mainly do their language learning within the confines, within the boundaries of their language classrooms. And so we need a bit of boundary crossing here in terms of uh, encouraging teachers to uh, set up, to try to uh, create these contacts, contact, uh, contacts with uh, speakers of the target language. One of the things we have noticed in our research is that some students, when they're involved in tandem language learning uh, exchanges, uh, they will spontaneously invite partners to uh, social media sites outside of class, which is really quite, inc quite incredible, and which is also an area which deserves to be studied further. And I would also say in terms of how teachers, especially when they're doing tandem language learning, can take a more advantage of these initiatives. Um, a final word, I'd just like to mention that at the present time at Université Laval, uh, we are setting up a tandem language learning research group. Uh, we've obtained funding for this. We're in the process of creating the website. And as part of this research group, we are also <coughs> setting up a tandem language learning learning community, which we're going to now, we're going to use the word tandem language learning community of practice. Uh, and this is, these meetings are um, aimed at an, what we want with these meetings, we want teachers to be able to interact with other teachers and share their experiences experimenting with uh, tandem language learning. And if you would like to participate, You would be most welcome. We had actually we had one meeting last June. We're going to have another meeting 
in June of next year. Uh, and if you want, if you would like to participate in this meeting, you can contact me directly, or you can just fill out the form, uh, which uh, you see on the uh, on the screen. The address is on the screen. So um, uh, at right now, thank you for attending this presentation. And if you have comments or questions, we can open this up a bit. Uh, yes, Monica, it is open to undergraduate undergraduate students. Um, and I, I probably will, at least to some of the students, I don't know, is invite some of the students in our program to take part in it if they wish, if they wish. Any comments or questions? Monica? Thanks, Susan. Sorry, I was just trying to figure out how to raise my hand virtually. Uh, That's right, we're in teams, <laughs> not Zoom. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much for the presentation. Every time I hear it, I, I kind of have new thoughts and I, ideas. So um, I, I guess the, the main thing I want to ask um, is if you could give us some examples, concrete examples of some of those activities that are already incorporated into the the platform. And I'm curious if they're sort of um, explicitly keyed to the Quebec education program, because I heard you using the word reinvestment and that kind of thing. And then, you know, how do partners outside Quebec respond to that kind of framing, if that's how it's framed, because, you know, we have a very particular program with three competencies and we use words like reinvest, which might not have the same meaning for partners elsewhere. Uh, exactly. Actually, I mean, the materials and the, <clears throat> the suggestions that we have on the uh, <coughs> platform are, are very general, uh, but we do have some uh, worksheets for three different levels. Uh, of uh, proficiency, uh, and they deal with all kinds of different themes, you know, like the places I have visited or you would like to visit, um, uh, you know, education, media and TV and the environment. There are all these kind of typical themes, but I think what's important is that uh, teachers, these are Word documents which teachers can download and change however they want. It's just ideas. Uh, and, but the other thing about these uh, worksheets is we do make a suggestion in terms of uh, a little form for reflection. Uh, I mean, this is something which could be encouraged, is having students reflect on to what degree they've been able to use strategies to foster their own language learning and also to help their partners. So I saw some hands. Uh, was it uh, Shauna first? I'm not, oh, or maybe somebody is in, the person who was involved in <laughs> coordinating Yes, well, I just wanted to maybe uh, give my input on the activities that are on the Tandem platform because I am using it as of now with uh, two of my groups uh, and I haven't used any of those activities yet um, only because with the uh, the teacher I'm working, the teachers I'm working with uh, for now have always um, suggested a theme that they are you know, using right now in their classroom. For example, this week we um, we are writing in French about les activités quotidiennes. So the French teacher in Ottawa has put up a uh, short activity on the forum, and my students need to explain in French what their uh, activités quotidiennes are, and vice versa. The, his students are also having to do the same thing. So he decided what it is that he wanted his students to be working on, and um, they will be doing it written for the moment because uh, he decided that his students were more comfortable that way for now. Um, but on uh, another note, the another teacher is asking me to use the video quite more um, with a different theme for my other group. So each uh, teacher, you know, can just choose and decide what it is that they are actually working on in the classroom. So it is interesting to have other options, but you can adapt to whatever need you have in your classroom. Uh, thank you very much, Shauna, and that's exactly it. And even as I mentioned, I mean, teachers can draw on the themes that they're using. Uh, so there's like, there's no, you know, uh, 
it's it's there's no obligation to use any of the materials or su suggested themes that are on the platform. They're just there as ideas, but it's even better. Uh, you know, when teachers are drawing on their own themes, this, this is this is great. And I'm so glad to hear. I mean, uh, this is something else is making a move from, uh, let's say, something that's asynchronous to synchronous and to what degree this is going to this possible. It's not easy in the school system, but if you're trying to do it, Shauna, this is wonderful and I'll be all ears <laughs> when you want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. We will be we will be talking more. <laughs> good, good. Glad to hear it. Uh, yes, um, I see. An, uh, it's Sunny. Excuse oh, me. Yes, I think it's me. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, this is really wonderful, and I can see the potential. Um, I have a lot of questions about um, what students do on the site. Uh, so. Uh, maybe I have missed it. So I saw that there are tools and do, can they use that to uh, like apart from going there to do an activity, can they just go on it themselves and then start socializing with their their uh, partners? Uh, they do. No, it's it's not mm -hmm. like open like to individual students. It's mm -hmm. first of all, it's to hook up classes. But of course, once students have access to uh, to the platform, mm -hmm. um, they have their login codes. Now, mm -hmm. if they're doing asynchronous activities, they can go on in school or at home. Now, mm -hmm. in terms of like the synchronous activities, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, they can if they if they wanted to, and it would be fantastic, is they could go on and use those the video conferencing room, for example, whenever they wanted to. And everything is recorded. I should say, I mean, there's one thing the looking at tandem language learning with the with the with school students. But of course, uh, I mean, uh, we the the video conferencing is used uh, and we do have some students who are in CJEP and also university uh, students who are who are using the platform and generally they get their students involved in um, uh, in video conferencing activities. Uh, I can say that this this uh, this term, I mean, <laughs> things are also evolving for me. I had a teacher from Harvard University who contacted me to ask me if I would be willing to have my students involved in an exchange. We're doing a an intercultural, a tandem intercultural exchange, and they're in the video conferencing room, of course. Uh, and all of these uh, these what's good, I mean, for uh, language learning and also for teachers is that all of these exchanges are recorded. Now, the students do have a choice. The students do have to click on the record button. So if there was a student who didn't want to be recorded, they could do this. Uh, if they didn't want to use their webcam, I mean, they don't have to turn it on. So there is that flexibility um, as well. So, so it is not just written communication, it can also be oral communication. Oh, absolutely, yeah. okay. uh, absolutely. And in fact, that's really the, the uh, major objective would be to have students engaged in the video conferencing exchanges. But as kind of an intermediate step, mm -hmm. uh, like when students are using the form, for example, this is kind of an intermediate step, is they can do the audio recordings or the video recordings. So it does, it, it's easier to do in a school context, and it does bring the oral language into the picture, even if it's done asynchronously. And uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, what's even a more, a, a more interesting tool is in the video conferencing room, students can also use that for asynchronous communication. And mm. the advantage of that is when they're in the, um, uh, the video conferencing room, there are more affordances. Uh, for example, they can upload a PowerPoint and they can use that to discuss something. Uh, and there's a chat box. There's a lot more affordances there that, that can be used. Excuse me, I think Shauna, you had your, your hand up. You have your hand oh, up. I was going to say too, oh. Susan, before you go on to Shauna, in the chat, um, Laura Flick was asking about uh, SAGEP teachers using this. And you did just now uh, quickly mentioned that it's being used at Sejap. Maybe you could elaborate a bit on that before you go on to Shauna's question. I would just like to say a special hello to Laura Flick uh, because Laura 
did, I think she did the very first uh, research involving tandem language learning. Just refresh my memory, Laura, but I think it was with, uh, was it with high school students or CJEP students? Are you there, Laura? A anyways, uh, uh, Laura did her, uh, you know, which I, I read with great interest. High school, thank you, Laura. Yeah, she did it with high school students. And in her, if I, yeah, so nice to see you. And like I say, I've I've read uh, your uh, your thesis, which with great interest. And one of the things that Laura explored, if you might me, if you don't mind me, just uh, uh, saying, is in her study, students were doing a tandem exchange as an add-on activity. Uh, and one of the problems with add-on activities is that students drop out. Uh, they drop out because they get busy. Uh, at lower levels, I mean, even in the um, um, in, in our own research, we've had uh, some teachers who wanted to do these exchanges as uh, add-ons, you know, where, you know, they tell students, they give them the login codes. I don't know how much structure they give them, but we do not advise this uh, for the simple reason, especially students who are in in the school system, they they often don't have the strategies they need uh, in order to negotiate these exchanges, or they don't have a high enough language level, so they get all confused and everything. Uh, so, uh, you know, we really feel like Laura recommended in her uh, in her thesis that uh, these exchanges be integrated into um, uh, be integrated into um, uh, classes. And I would just like to say, yes, we do have some. Uh, uh, teachers uh, who are involved in, in CJEP. Any other questions or comments? Maybe is Shauna, is, is your yeah, moment? Well, I, I just wanted to uh, comment for Sunny uh, asking about like the forum and if on the forum, is it just written or how what it is that we can do? I'll just give you a quick example of this week. What happened with one of my students was that she received a video, uh, an introductory video of a student just introducing herself. And then she she just goes on saying her name and her age and everything in English. And then she says, I have a question for you in this video. So she's, you know, for, of course, speaking to my student and she says, how do you pronounce your name? So her video stops like that. So um, this student of mine, her name is Marion in French, right? So uh, of course, this Anglophone in uh, Georgia, in, in, U in USA, of course, doesn't know how to pronounce this French name. So asks the question, which was really fun because then that kind of made my student need to react orally or, you know, verbally somehow, whichever she chose. Uh, but I think this particular student decided to just do an oral, um, just an audio uh, message, but she could have also decided to do a, a video as well, but she was a bit shy. It's kind of a shy student. So I did suggest to her, well, you can answer this student and, you know, just start your message by saying, oh, well, uh, I'll answer your question and pronounce my name for you. So that's what she did, but as an audio message. Um, so it's, it's quite fun to see that they can also uh, ask these these types of questions of pronunciation or how we say things or so there's a great example right there. And these kids are nine and 11 years old, so. It's very yes. good. Thank you very much uh, um, for that example, Shauna. Sunny. Uh, um, that was fascinating because like the whole point about bilingualism and reciprocity is so important. And I wonder if you, like when you do your research, do you look at the data and look at how the the the, the students are engaged in that kind of metalinguistic discussion about pronunciation, about, you know, how we use this and how is the grammar different? Would do they also, like because of the nature of the activities, because of this change, do they also engage in that kind of conversation? It is, it is an objective of ours to do this with, um, uh, with the um, students in the school context. I can say our research was a bit messed up because of the pandemics, uh, but of course, Shauna is, uh, uh, is 
Shauna is continuing on and doing such great things. But I would just like to say that I have had other students uh, involved in doing research on tandem language learning with university students uh, and, um, and adults and university students. And uh, yes, um, uh, they, uh, they do give us, they do give feedback on vocabulary, but also uh, it, it can be on grammar. And now that I think of it, I actually, a few years ago, I actually had one of my um, master's students who did um, a research, uh, who did a, a research uh, project with grade six, uh, grade six intensive students using chat. And that's been published, Jiguer and Parks. Uh, and the thing is, even in a chat context, I mean, when we did that study, one of the things, because at that point in time, most of the studies had just involved like email asynchronous changes. I mean, and we wondered, you know, could students of this age uh, give each other metalinguistic feedback or, or help even help each other in any way? Uh, and uh, in the chat, uh, we did analyses and indeed they are able to. However, I would like to say uh, that the teacher plays a very, very important role in terms of fostering this, uh, <coughs> uh, including at the secondary level, if not at every level, in terms of uh, talking with the students about how they can give this, this type of feedback. And another thing too is that, um, 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 what was I gonna say? Hmm. Just, uh, I'm sorry, I just, I just forgot. But another thing I wanted to say, thinking of Shauna, is that this, um, this, uh, this opens up the possibility of interdisciplinary collaboration with uh, French teachers. And Shauna was able to do that to quite an amazing degree in one of her classes. Uh, but once again, we're looking at teacher beliefs. And I know one of the other uh, participants in our project who invited in the secondary level, invited his um, a French teacher to get involved, uh, she did not respond uh, to this. So once again, we're talking at changes at the level of interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, and we're right deep in terms of teachers' beliefs. It's not only about language learning, it's in terms about, I guess, collaboration as well amongst colleagues. Yeah, Monica, excuse me. Yeah, I was just curious. I mean, I know this site is designed and it's available in French, English and Spanish, and it's designed specifically for those linguistic um, exchanges uh, in the tandem platform. But are the, ha, has anyone else uh, reached out, wanted to use it with other languages as well? Uh, there have been uh, uh, some discussions. Uh, but uh, not to a great degree. The, the 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 bottom line is, if there was ever a teacher who asked us and said, "Oh, well, we want to do an exchange between uh, students uh, who are learning um, uh, Italian and Greek," we would accommodate them as best we could. It, it's just that it's already enough just trying to deal with English, French, and Spanish, which are the main languages here in the Quebec school system. So, I mean, for the time being, I mean. Um, we're just trying to focus on those languages. But I mean, if you look at the literature, of course, these exchanges can be done with uh, uh, students of any any language and and they are being done <laughs> with students of a whole variety of languages. And and I, I see that Sunny left a little note in the chat that, you know, of course, it's sort of designed for this broader interaction with the world outside Quebec. But she said even within the same school, you could set up partnerships, I suppose, in a pinch. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And this has been done. Um, you know, you can have face to face tandems. You can you can set these up uh, in your own school context if you have students who want to learn each other's language uh, and they can. I know in one place where that's been done quite a lot is uh, it was in Vancouver, Vancouver Community College, I think. Um, um, I, it's a little bit vague in my mind, but uh, they they really um, I, I know that they had it like it was I think mainly done by the students where you know, students who wanted to learn another language, they'd find a partner and they would partner up. It can be, you know, face to face. That's the way it started out and there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> and it can be done, like I say, if you have students in your own school setting or in your own university setting, this is another uh, another option. Okay. 
Are there any other questions or comments from our audience this evening? This afternoon? Sorry, it's dark out. It feels like evening. <laughs> I might say that in our own program, uh, program at uh, Université Laval, uh, of course, a lot of our students who teach uh, English, they're really quite bilingual and they don't really need to do a tandem exchange, but we do offer them this option for English or Spanish. I have some contacts with a, a professor in the in an American university and another one with a, uh, in, a in a Mexican university. Uh, so the thing is, is we do this on just if you, you know, just as an optional thing, if they'd like to do it. Uh, and a few of the students do get in, in do get involved. Uh, I see that Stephanie, I'm sorry, I can't see your whole family name um, in the chat. <laughs> Stephanie Malle uh, has a question. Maybe do you want to activate your mic, Stephanie, and pose your question? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, my sister graduated two years ago from Université Laval, and her program was Études Internationales et Langue Moderne. And right now she's doing uh, medi Médiation Interculturelle at UDS. Um, would you first suggest that like being in the tandem language learning group, is it something that's pretty realistic for a, a student and would it be open to her given her experience? Uh, OK, I. What would uh, excuse me, what what does this person exactly want to do? I, uh, well, my sister, she's she's currently studying with languages. It, um, she knows um, Spanish. She studied at, at Universal Laval, Arabic. She she really wants for my for my uh, my sister, she's done substitution. She's done a lot of things, but she's still trying to find her path. But she would want to really work with um, interlanguaging and really she, she would try to find a job opportunity in that sense. So she would want to work on projects like this. Uh, OK, the thing is, is um, we don't pay anybody uh, to get involved with. Um, with us, mm -hmm. um, our our platform is really aimed at classes, teachers who have classes. Yep. It's not a platform aimed at individual learners. Now I can say, you know, uh, there are platforms um, publicly available, which, uh, you know, tandem platforms where you can go online and you can find a, uh, you can find a partner. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, these platforms aren't appropriate for school context because believe me, there's just too many rules about uh, you know, it has to be a secure platform. It, it wouldn't be advisable for, but for adults, uh, you can do this. Of course, it's always a bit of a gamble whether or not you get a partner who's going to actually, um, uh, you know, be involved. And and this is the problem with uh, some of these um, platforms is sometimes it's, it's finding a, a partner that's an appropriate partner. And then is the partner going to be reliable? I mean, um, I don't know if I've really answered your question. <laughs> to tell you the truth. Huh? I mean, I think you, you definitely have. So I so I'm, I'm just thankful. It was a really nice talk. I think that it really linked in with uh, last week's uh, last month's speaker really about the virtual learning and really bringing in that to the conversation. Yes, and that was um, uh, Robin's uh, talk. And um, um, one of the things which I, I, I think Robin too, I mean, he's in our program. Um, is one day it's not for tomorrow though is i would love to see uh virtual reality and uh, uh used for tandem exchanges i mean but that's <laughs> it's far down the line <laughs> especially with getting the quest headsets and uh, connecting the classes but it's a uh, it's a nice uh it's a nice future hope uh, which I can which I think could be quite uh, interesting. There are like especially with university students, there are some initiatives in this regard, but you know it's all very like exploratory and it's all very problematic. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Well, it's so interesting, Susan. It's it's wonderful to uh, to to see this project gaining momentum and growing and evolving over time. So keep us posted how it turn it comes in the future. And uh, I, I'm 
I, I'm sure that some folks will be interested in joining the community of practice as well, the, the tandem language learning community of practice, in order to keep abreast of these things. Um, it, did Emily need to make closing comments, Sunny? Is there something I'm forgetting from a perspective of the For Real group before we, we close today? We, we don't have any closing comments, but um, uh, we will um, have uh, the winter break. And then after the winter break in January, we'll have a talk on prolingual uh, teaching and learning. Wonderful, wonderful. And so anyone that missed today can certainly catch up with this uh, recording on the For Real website. Thanks to Amalie in the chat. Uh, expressing her appreciation and I think we can all do that. I'll attempt to do some more clapping virtually. There we go. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Susan, for being here and uh, I wish everyone a uh, an excellent holiday break ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Uh, thank you once again for inviting me and thank you to those of you who attended this presentation. Bye bye. Bye, Bye take care, now. everyone. Bye.